Hi everyone, my name is Susie Tinker and I work on customer experience on the Minecraft Education Edition team. And I'm so excited to be here with you today to share a little bit more about Minecraft education and everything that's new for this school year. So let's get started. At Minecraft, our vision and purpose is to build a better world through the power of play. And over the last year, we have seen Minecraft being used in phenomenal ways all over the world. We've seen middle school students recreate their school campus in Minecraft to give incoming elementary school students a tour of their new school since they couldn't be there in person. We saw students create accessible and sustainable public spaces that they would like to be using in their communities. And we actually had our first ever global build championship where students created places where humans and animals could happily coexist. And now I want to take a minute to just share all of the great work that's happening all over Australia. Educators across the Victoria Department of Education used Minecraft to promote socialization, digital citizenship, and student engagement during remote and hybrid learning. Students in year five studied urban redevelopment in the mini Melbourne Minecraft world. Minecraft gave them an opportunity to have a virtual field trip of the city, and they found areas that they felt needed improvement. They submitted proposals for redeveloping their chosen sites, and then students' creations included creating a zoo in the botanic gardens with a railway tour and entertainment platforms floating in the Yarra River. Minecraft also played a large part in this year's NADOC challenge, which over a thousand Indigenous students participated in. The challenge invited students to research about Indigenous knowledge, histories, and creation stories unique to their local area. Students were then encouraged to answer the question, how might we build sustainable schools, cities, towns, or communities in 2030 using indigenous science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths? By using Paint 3D and creating Minecraft worlds, they helped answer some of those questions. These stories and more can be found on our blog at education.minecraft.net if you want to learn more. I also thought we could take a look at one of the winning submissions from the Global Build Championship, which was a group of student team from Western Australia. They won a top spot out of thousands of submissions. And their build featured safe and sustainable electricity generation and more. Let's take a look. We're three year 10 students from a public school here in Perth, Western Australia. Today we present to you Future Perfect, our innovative take on public space where humans and animals can coexist in sustainable harmony with the natural environment. Let us give you a quick tour to explain how the space supports a healthy environment for humans and animals. We have fenced off area to protect turtles and other marine life with our artificial reef down in the water. We have prioritized to use sustainable resources to protect animals and reduce pollution so humans can enjoy the environment too. We learned an enormous amount about teamwork. We didn't have a lot of time to put this world together and it took a true team effort from the three of us to deliver the project. We also learned about the power of just getting started. Our ideas began clearer as we refined them over time. We learned a lot about sustainability and the ways in which we can leverage natural resources, build comfortable, sustainable homes, run modern transportation, and practice sustainable agriculture. As part of the process of developing Future Perfect, we thought a lot about how our farm can contribute to zero hunger and how we can use a dis desalination plant to avoid wasting water, goal seven, affordable and clean energy, is what our world is all about. For example, we use wind and solar power to power our houses, we have solar panels and wind turbines along the south and east coast. We hope you enjoyed Future Perfect and it inspires others to consider how we might like more sustainability in the future. Western Australia is some of the best wind and solar energy resources in the world and we were inspired by this to create our own submission. That is just incredible. There was a new video starting there. That was just incredible and I think I am no Minecraft pro i am not an excellent builder but being able to see the ideas that students are able to make come to life in minecraft is just so powerful 
So with that, I'd love to share a few ideas of product updates that we've launched and are working on to bring into your classrooms this year. I'm going to be talking about creating Teams assignments directly within the Minecraft library, how we can incorporate Flipgrid into our lessons for student assessment and demonstration, and also show you where you can learn how to get more efficient and comfortable playing Minecraft with some of our new user tutorials. So let's start with Teams integration. You can create a Minecraft Teams assignment from any of the lessons in the Minecraft library. So if we click on play and we go to view library, we can see all of the different categories that exist in the library. We're going to click on build challenges and we're going to find the Museum of Me challenge. Then you're going to see the share link button. If we click on that, we're able to share to Teams, email, and even Google Classroom. You can also copy the link. When we click on share to Teams, it's going to open up Teams in the browser. I can elect to share to a person or group or to create an assignment. For this purpose, we're going to create an assignment. I can choose the class that I want to assign it to and add in all of the other information, like the title of the lesson, the instructions. I'm going to have my students submit a PDF book and quill to me as their final work. I'm going to give the assignment some points and make a due date. And then when I click assign, of course, it's going to create a team's assignment in the student teams. So let's take a look at what that looks like from the student perspective. So as a student, I'm going to go to my team's assignments. And I can see the Museum of Me challenge there. If I click on that, I'm going to see a Minecraft link. When I click on that link, it's going to say this site is trying to open Minecraft Education Edition. And I'm going to click on Open. And if I have Minecraft already downloaded, Minecraft is going to open and automatically launch the Museum of Me World so I know exactly where I'm supposed to be for this assignment. I can click on Create World. And now I'm in the Museum of Me challenge. If I were to finish my Museum of Me, maybe build a basketball hoop or my bed, I can then get the camera, take some photos, and export that as a PDF book and quill. I already have one of those saved to my desktop, so I'm going to go to Add Work in Teams, and I'm going to go find my PDF that I already created, upload that, and turn in my Minecraft assignment. We're also working on a few other Teams integration features that will be coming out in the next few months, so stay tuned on what's coming. The next thing I want to show you is how to integrate Flipgrid and use that as the assessment tool of choice. Flipgrid is such a powerful tool to have students do screen recording flyover videos for their Minecraft work and give a voiceover of what they've built and why. Oops. We're going to go back, keep going. Oh, no. OK, so here we go. So here I have an NPC, which you do not have to use if you want to use Flipgrid. If you can imagine, you can provide the flip code or the URL for the grid to your students in any way you want through Teams, through whatever LMS you're using. But what we're going to show here today is how to embed that URL into an NPC so it's in the world. So as an educator, I can spawn an NPC directly into the world that I'm going to send to my students, and you can see it says Flipgrid assignment. As a student, if I had already finished my Museum of Me, I can right click on the NPC, and it'll say click on the link below to take a screen recording of your Museum of Me. Don't forget to tell us about yourself and what you built. And when I click on that link that says screen recording, I am going to be taken to the Flipgrid page that my teacher set up for me. Now I can record my response. Going to log in with all my good Microsoft credentials. That's me in a previous previous time recording my museum of me. I can hit record screen and then start screen recording. And you'll see here that I can actually choose Minecraft as the application window. 
and then I can start my screen recording. So here I am in Minecraft. This is my museum of me. I built a basketball court because I love playing basketball and I've been playing since I was six years old. And I still play at Hoop Fest, which is the largest three on three basketball tournament in the entire world that's actually held in Washington State every summer. We didn't get to play last year, but maybe this year. We're hoping. We'll see. So now I can pause and go back to Flipgrid and hit stop recording. And then I can edit my video if I want. I think it's good, so I'm going to push confirm. And then I can submit it to Flipgrid. And so now my teacher can see that I completed the Museum of Me challenge because I have su successfully completed my video screen recording in Flipgrid. So that's just another way if you are an educator that's not comfortable using Minecraft yet, this is a way that students can do everything that they need to do in Minecraft on their own. And for assessment, all you have to do is watch their video. You never have to go in Minecraft or go into the worlds to understand what they've done and what they have built to demonstrate their knowledge. And the last thing I'm going to show you is how to find our new user tutorials on how to play Minecraft. So if you go back to the home screen and hit play, we're going to see the same screen and go into the in-game library. And there is a how to play section on the bottom right hand screen. And if I hit start here, there are six new how to play tutorials from movement, breaking and placing blocks, all the way through using our in-game assessment features like the camera and NPCs. If you were to click on any of these tutorials, you will see that you can launch the world, but what you can also do is watch a movie that we created on YouTube that is a voiceover of how to complete that challenge for extra support. So there will be someone guiding you through the entire tutorial. If you wanna go ahead and watch the video first, or you can kind of pause and play uh, while you're going through all of those tutorials. So those are new. Um, you may or may know those ex not know those exist yet, but those are great resources if you're just learning how to play and get comfortable in Minecraft. So taking a minute to talk about Minecraft curriculum, we have over 700 lessons on our website and in the in-game library, and we're slowly starting to bring our best lessons to in-game, but we're always launching new content. You can see on the bottom there, we have three new subject kits, digital citizenship, SEL and equity and inclusion. And so if you haven't taken a look at some of the content and curriculum that we have, I highly recommend you do so. If you go to our website, you can actually search by standard and Australian standards to find the lesson that you're looking for, no matter what grade or subject you teach. So digging a little bit farther into computer science, we have recently launched over 150 hours of computer science curriculum for beginner, intermediate, and advanced coders. And these are all meant to be cross-curricular lessons that anyone can use to get started teaching coding and CS in the classroom. So let's take a look at a new video that we have almost launched publicly that gives a good overview of our offerings. Start your coding journey with over 150 hours of computer science curriculum in Minecraft Education Edition. Begin by learning introductory coding concepts with Hour of Code. Continue block-based coding with coding fundamentals. Then begin learning text-based coding in JavaScript or even Python. Your journey will take you from the Arctic Animal Research Center to the Rings of Saturn to awesome floating islands. Use your creativity to build unique solutions to coding problems. Start coding today. So if you haven't checked out this year's Hour of Code World and lesson, I highly recommend you do so. It is my favorite lesson that we have ever launched. You can actually do the lesson in blocks or in Python for the first time ever. This lesson is all about equity and inclusion and bringing the illagers and villagers together to better understand each other and collaborate 
all through the power of code. So there are great resources on our website and in the in-game library that will help you get started with the hour of code lesson. Coding Fundamentals is our introductory beginner coding curriculum. There is a lesson in there that I absolutely adore. There is a sea turtles lesson that has your agent, which is our coding robot buddy, clean up trash off of the beach. And when you have successfully cleaned up all of the trash, you get to watch the baby sea turtles hatch and go to the ocean. It is just magical and thinking that we get to you know teach concepts like that like sea turtles and animals but also teach students the power of code is just absolutely incredible so if you haven't checked out those lessons that range from themes on animals and space to time travel we also have new artificial intelligence lessons and two sets of python curriculum that are in the computer science subject kit of the in-game library so to wrap this up, if you're new to the Minecraft world and you're like, where do I start? How do I get started? I would highly suggest joining our community. You can sign up for our newsletter and get monthly up-to-date information of what's going on at aka.ms slash mcedu newsletter. If you want some free professional development, we have a learning path on the MEC, the Microsoft Educator Center, called the Minecraft Teacher Academy, and it walks you through how to get set up, how to get started, placing your first blocks through assessment and classroom management, all the way through more advanced topics like coding, chemistry, and redstone. We also have a new coding academy on the MEC that teaches you how to use that 150 hours of curriculum. So those two courses on the MEC will give you both your Minecraft Certified Educator badge and the new Minecraft Coding Academy badge. Also, we have so many amazing educators that are already mentors in Australia. And if you go to connect with a mentor on our website, you can actually filter to Australia and see all of the people from around Australia that can help you get started and are already Minecraft pros. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned more about Minecraft and some of the different ways you can bring this into your classroom. And thank you so much for being here with me today. And if you ever need anything, please reach out to us at, at @playcraftlearn hashtag MinecraftEDU. Thank you so much. Thanks, Susie. I am so excited to see what uh, Australian teachers do with Minecraft education in 2021. So get on out there, give it a go. It's super exciting um, and one of the best tools that I've used in the classroom. Also keep those questions coming. We're answering those in the chat for you. Um, and now I'd like to introduce uh, the amazing Nolene Callaghan from New South Wales Department of Education, who's going to talk to you about how you could introduce Minecraft to your teachers um, and colleagues uh, so that you can have a whole school approach to using Minecraft Education Edition. Over to you, Nolene. Don't you dare, I'm back Just light a torch with me I said I'm going back She said shut up and mind me These diamonds are my destiny She said ooh, ooh Shut up and mind with me We were all geared up for a fight The creepers and the skeletons spawn tonight Helpless in the darkness, no one in sight Oh, we were bound to mind together Bound to fight together She pulled her bow We hear some monsters nearby She tossed the sword and she said Oh, don't you dare run back Just light a torch with me I said I'm going back She said shut up and mind me These diamonds are my destiny She said ooh, ooh, shut up Hi, I'm Nolene, and today I'm going to be talking to you about best practices when using Minecraft in the classroom. I am so excited to be here today and to share this information with you. Now, I know that I've only got 25 minutes, so I'm going to apologize for a few things in advance. Firstly, I speak like I've just had 20 million 
uh, energy drinks and um, I'm going to be rushing through resources. The best thing about all of that is that you're going to be able to watch this on slow and understand everything very, very clearly, clearly that I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to go through the Minecraft Education website um, as well as a self-paced tutorial that I've personally developed for teachers to use and share with all of their colleagues. Now, before I get started, I'll give you a little bit about myself, tell you a little bit about myself, um, just in case you've never heard about me. Um, I am a Minecraft um, a global Minecraft mentor. I'm a Microsoft Innovative Expert Educator and I'm actually a teacher in uh, New South Wales Department of Education schools. So lots and lots of experience with using Minecraft in classrooms, delivering curriculum. And that is the best thing about this is that you can embed it into any classroom lesson and um, it will succeed and you'll still be able to achieve all of your learning outcomes. So what I'm gonna do first is go through the Minecraft Education website what it looks like um, and if you go to education.minecraft.net you'll be able to find the website and on here is um, everything that you need to know now I use this as my Bible it is a single source of truth I find everything that I need to know on here including all of the updates that Susie has just gone through as well now this is actually a fantastic website and I do recommend that everybody goes to here as for any sorts um, a sort of um, questions or just a, as a reference point. The great thing about this is that it's actually been updated quite significantly if you've visited this in the past. And um, all of the features within Minecraft education are now in the app itself. You don't need to come to this website and download any additional extras like the, co the coding tools or anything like that. So it's all done for you. So this website is just wonderful. Now, before I get started um, talking about this website, it is important to know that different schools will follow different processes in terms of how you would access this website and how you would access Minecraft education in general. So if you are from a Department of Education school, um, if you're in a um, T4L environment, for instance, and your school has managed devices, you don't have to download anything yourself and your students don't need to download anything. You can just speak to your computer coordinator and they can just push out all of the, um, the apps to all of the devices within your school so that students can actually use Minecraft education. If you're using a BYOD, if you're, sorry, if your school is a BYOD school, the students can download it and I can do it all from here. They don't need to go through any play stores or whatnot. If you go to an, um, if you teach at an independent Catholic or other type of school, please speak to your IT administrator and they will give you the best advice as to how to access Minecraft education. So here on the Minecraft Education website, we can see this beautiful purple button. And this here is how you would download Minecraft Education. So if you haven't done that yet, I do recommend that you do that straight away. And it will um, allow you to um, download everything regardless of um, uh, what, what institution uh, that you teach at um, and your, your colleagues teach at. Um, it's Minecraft education can be used on a ton of devices now. Um, it's available on a Windows device, it's available on iPads, um, and it's available now on Chromebooks. Now, the catch is, it's only available on Chromebooks if you don't have a Department of Education website. Ugh, I know, very, very frustrating, but we are getting there. We're still developing how we can do that where it's in a safe environment for our kids. So if you go, if you teach at those other schools, you can certainly use it on Chromebooks. But don't worry, watch your space, it is coming. So back to this website. Um, it allows you to download it. And the best part about this, I'm not gonna go through the entire website because my self-paced tutorial actually goes through this website for you and it explains every single section in detail. But the best part about this website is the class resources. And this is just phenomenal. Um, it has been developed so well and all the people that have been contributing to this um, are actually teachers, global, other global Minecraft mentors from all over the world contributing to this um, about with lessons that they've succeeded in in their own classrooms. So I do recommend that you look at this. Um, the best thing here is your lessons. Now, if you're completely new to Minecraft, you don't know how to create something for your own lesson, you don't know what to do, you can come here and look at the subject kits. Now, the best thing here is that it is for 
Um, it's suitable for every single KLA. Um, I teach um, in high school from stage three to six, and I have used it in everything that I teach. And I teach um, both HISI and TAS subjects. And in terms of stage six, I teach um, IPT as well as economics, and have quite successfully been able to use Minecraft in my subjects. Um, IPT in terms of the coding and the economics, looking at politics politics uh, politics um, as well as the mathematical components um, in primary school I've used it for so many things as well so working with lots and lots of primary schools um, in terms of how they've embedded it into their um, their uh, teaching and learning ICT trajectory from early stage one to stage three has been phenomenal so um, lots and lots of things that you can do here um, these are some of the lessons that you can um, access and they're just wonderful, and everything here is um is is, is available and, and co uh, capable for you to do, regardless of the level of um skill that you have using Minecraft. Now, the one thing that I will um make a special note about, and um is that when it comes to the age of the the lesson, take that with a grain of salt. Okay, as we know, students develop at very different ages, so. I have used a lesson, for instance, where it has said three to five with high school kids, okay? Those numbers mean absolutely nothing. So please play with them all, learn what um, your students are capable of doing because, you know, you just, it's, it's very hard to gauge what they're actually going to be like in a gamification website as opposed to using a Google site or something like that. So there are your lessons, which are just wonderful. The other amazing thing here is that you have a ton of worlds that are already built that you can use. Now, these worlds have been created by the wonderful people at Minecraft, um, as well as by schools all over the world. So um, regardless of what you're teaching, you can actually access these worlds and deliver content and a lesson in here as well. So we've got like World War One and financial literacy and so forth. So I'll let you go and have a look at that in your own time because they're just amazing. Now you don't have to use the lessons and the worlds that are in here. Okay. Very rarely do I use those. I like to start with a flat world, which is like what you can see behind me and develop lessons um, that's completely suitable to, to my students. And I do start off small and then build them up big and I'll show you exactly how to do that as well. Uh, going back to this website, the other thing that I'd like to show you as well is that um, there are lots of Australian resources on here. Um, we are probably the biggest user of Minecraft in the world, which is absolutely fantastic. And um, here is a lot of information about how to teach Minecraft um, within um, the Australian curriculum. I've done one thing further from this website um, in my self-paced tutorial, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I've actually mapped all of the ice are all of the capabilities from the Australian curriculum to Minecraft so it doesn't matter what you're teaching um, I've, I've actually done all the hard work for you so you can actually go in now and go okay this is what I'm gonna be this is the KLA that I teach in these are the capabilities um, that it's going to um, meet and you can just tick them off into your lesson so absolutely fantastic resource and um, a lot of teachers have said that as a result of that hard work um, they're able to now just go on and not worry about whether they're actually covering everything in their own syllabus um, or because they know that the learning outcome have been achieved which is just fantastic to hear and the more students the more teachers that use minecraft the better in my opinion so that is the website now i'll let you go and have a look at that yourself but i do recommend that to be your bible um it's something that i've actually got as one of my favorites so please 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 look at that Okay, and now we are going to look at the self-paced tutorial that I've created for teachers. Now, I've done this on purpose because so many teachers can't attend professional learning in real time. So I've done this as a self-paced um, tutorial that, you, that any teacher can do at any point, but also refer back. Um, I've created a ton of YouTube videos and I watch a lot of YouTube videos, but sometimes they're quite confusing um, and time consuming that you just want to um, quickly do a bit of a Google search or find something and learn from it that way. So um, I've created something that's going to you know, in include both. Um, and hopefully you can use to learn, teach yourselves and then use as a professional learning piece that you can then deliver to the staff at your school. So this is completely free and open to anybody. So please, please, please share it. So to start, just simply click here to start as it suggests. 
And the great thing about this is that you can actually follow this in a sequential order or, and by clicking next or, you can just click on the sections that you want. So I'm not gonna go through every single section, obviously, because we don't have that much time, but I'm going to go through the main things. Now, the main things here is that um, when in my introduction, it does give you an explanation as the differences between Minecraft and Minecraft education, which are actually really important because our students know everything there is about Minecraft but may not necessarily know um, about Minecraft education and there is a significant difference. The biggest difference is that Minecraft education is a smaller version of Minecraft. So you're going to be hearing a lot of lingo and a lot of terminology we've also put into the self um paste a tutorial so you can understand some of the words that your students are saying but it is a lot more limited than what the original Minecraft by Mojang um, has created so please be aware of that that if they do ask you or they say you know in Minecraft we can do this it's not necessarily going to transfer over to Minecraft education so here I've gone through the website as well and I actually go through all the steps and how to follow that as well so that's all of there for you um, as I said, the Minecraft worlds and the Minecraft lessons are also listed here. Um, information about licenses, please only look at that if you're at a Department of Education school. This will be different depending on the institution that you are currently teaching at. So um, please speak to your IT administrator for more information. Now, this is something that um, all teachers value. Um, these are all the cheat sheets that I have found for uh, Minecraft education. So any information that you need um, that you can um, that you can use, um, you please download and use. Now here is one of my most favorite things. This is a chemistry lab journal. So I wanna give you a quick story on, on this. Um, chemistry, so the students can now create um, experiments within Minecraft education, which is just fantastic. And the great thing is that I've now found out that schools, high schools, are actually doing experiments online in Minecraft education, as opposed to getting all the chemicals out and doing it in their science labs in, you know, um, physically, um, which is Fantastic. So it's actually saving a lot of money for the school. It's actually um, making a much more safe environment. And it's actually a lot more fun to be doing it in Minecraft and the students have a record of doing it. So lots and lots of benefits of having Minecraft there. This other here, this other thing here, are my cheat sheets for students. I actually have this printed out and laminated for some of my students, particularly those students who have never ever dabbled in Minecraft education before. So it's basically a cheat sheet of which keys mean which things. So by clicking on the W, w students can move forward. Click on the S, the students can come backward. Now, all of this is already in the Minecraft um, App, the tool but a lot of students like to see it on the side as well just so they don't get too confused so I would have that you would need it for no more than one lesson and then the students will be able to move on and um, and just do fantastic things in their world so great great tools there okay playing Minecraft okay so I've put this in here because a lot of teachers come up to me whenever I deliver pro professional learning and go I want to use this so badly, yet the teachers in my faculty or in my stage or my head teacher or a member of executive are refusing to allow Minecraft in my school. What do I do? So I've actually created um, a why you should do it um, page in here. So all of this information um, will hopefully help you push your case further. Um, there's also case studies on the bottom of that, that I've actually used um, in schools and things that actually prove the st from students' point of view. So this um, here from the 2017 GHS Minecraft Ed Education Edition pilot actually has student voices in there. So it tells us what the students were experiencing when they were actually playing with Minecraft. I have also written a research paper on um, the benefits of using Minecraft education in um, Australian schools. So if you Google that, that will also come up. And if you'd like a copy, please contact me. My email details and everything will be at the end of this presentation. And I'll be happy to share that with you as well. Um, coding. Coding is not as daunting as it sounds. People think, oh, you know, that's only for the IT teachers. It's really not. It's for anything. And coding will actually help the students 
um, be able to use Minecraft education so much better than what they would if they weren't um, using coding, if they were just like placing their blocks as traditionally. So what I've actually done here is I've actually shown you the basics of how to use Minecraft, um, the, the coding section rather, and what it all means. Now, the great thing about the coding act, um, tutorials or the programs that's built in within Minecraft is that it's not set at any age. There is no such thing that the blocks, for instance, are for a younger group of students, the Python is for the middle group of students, and then the JavaScript is for the older students. Um, I have seen students in stage six use blocks, and I've seen students in year, um, sorry, stage three use JavaScript. So there's absolutely no um, rules when it comes to who can use what. Um, it's a great way to have that learning trajectory go on when it, you're talking about coding and gamification. Um, and I've also got some videos here to help you along the way with some more resources. Okay, now the Australian curriculum. This is the part that makes everything just amazing. Now, before we get to the Australian curriculum, I always like to talk about the fact that Minecraft is not something that you just throw into a lesson to fill up time um, at the end of term or you know during free time or whatnot. It should be embedded into the curriculum carefully and purposefully. And by doing that, the students will benefit from using Minecraft so much more. So I've actually provided here examples of how some schools that I've actually worked with have included Minecraft education into their overall um, uh, scope and sequence. So some schools actually have it as part of their ITC learning trajectory. Their students move from one particular technology to the next, building their skills and, and their knowledge throughout. So here is an example, or a couple of examples, of what you can do um, in your school using Minecraft Education. Um, here we talk about the ICT um, capability, which um, hopefully we all know well about um, and, and are actually applying within our teaching and learning. And what I've done here, and this is the fantastic part, is that I've actually linked this capability to every single KLA. So by going in here, it actually lets you know what outcomes and what capabilities you can actually achieve in every subject or every area. If I am, for whatever reason, missing something that you're teaching, please let me know and I'll update this page as soon as I can. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now research. So this is the research that I was talking about that I've actually put together. So here is um, a short video about why you should be using Minecraft Education that's been produced by Minecraft Education. And this is the research paper that I've actually written myself. And this is published and it's been peer reviewed and whatnot. So um, a great um, resource um, that you can certainly use. Um, and always, you know, there's other people that have produced um, fantastic work, particularly Bronze Duckley, if you Google or um, search for her, um, you can certainly find um, lots of work that she's put together on the Australian curriculum also. Something that a lot of teachers like to see is the showcase um, or other schools using um, Minecraft education and the, what I've done here is actually show examples um, of how schools have actually used it. So these are just some of the schools that I've actually used Minecraft with um, and some examples to show you what they've actually done with it. So lots of um, great resources there um, to get you started with teaching Minecraft. Okay, so now that we've got all of that, how, where next? How do we start? What do we do? Okay, first thing is start slow. Okay, don't roll this out to every single class in your entire year or stage. Start with one class, perhaps even start with a Minecraft club that you may, may meet once a week during lunch or after school or whatever it is, but start small. The reason why I say that is that because if there's any any issues that you need to iron out yourself, it'll be much easier for you to do with a smaller group of students than with a larger group of students. Something that you need to remember as well is if once you are doing this in a classroom and you are asking students to join, particularly if you're in a Department of Education school, your class, your Minecraft world will be limited to 30 people. Now, that's not you and 30 students, it's you and 29 students. It does boot you out. So please be aware of that. Um, in those situations, I do tend to just split um, the class up into two worlds and run two worlds um, simultaneously and that, that still works quite well. Well, um, 
for those people who are completely worried about using Minecraft, I also recommend that if they have their own children at home, play with them. The first time that I ever played Minecraft Education, um, I dug a hole so deep that it was completely black. I thought, oh, it's night time. And I turned it off and days later I was still black and it just turned out that I had dug myself in a hole and my kids were able to help me out. So um, yes, please, please, please play with them. And if they love Minecraft, sit next to them and watch and ask questions and it's the best way to learn. Um, hour of code is also another great way to do it. It's a one hour as it suggests, and a great way just to um, be able to introduce that into your class and also um, learn what your students are like, what their ability levels are in terms of using the game, and then you can introduce a curriculum. So once they get over the excitement of Minecraft, you will have a lot of screaming and laughing and just pure, pure engagement. But once all that subsides, the, the learning will start, and that is just beautiful. Rule number one, actually there's only one rule, okay one rule your students will always know more than you okay doesn't matter how much you know for minecraft they will always 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 know more than what you need to know what what you know and even myself doesn't matter how upskilled i am my son will come in and go don't you know how to do that boom 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 and he just does things so quickly i think how on earth did you do that so our, our kids are just so incredibly talented. So please just remember that you don't need all the answers because someone in your classroom will. And if you make them the Minecraft Ninja, for example, um, and they can help all of the other students, you're giving that student that knows everything about Minecraft um, the opportunity to be a leader in your um, in your classroom, which is a huge another asset that you can do for your students as well. Now, as I've said already, your um, Minecraft Education works on a number of devices, but if you are in a department school, it doesn't yet work on Chromebooks. So just remember that when you implement it. Now, before I go, because I know I've been speaking for ages and ages and ages at a mammoth speed, um, I would like to remind you of all the places that you can get help, more help on Minecraft Education. So the first one being the Minecraft Education website, obviously. The second one being the Minecraft Education Editions Twitter page. If you're on Twitter, please, please, please follow them. Absolutely fantastic resources. And you can stay up to date with everything that Susie puts out and the Minecraft team put out. Um, if you're on Facebook, they've also got a Facebook page that you can follow. You can watch all of my tutorials on YouTube. You can, um, if you're a Department of Education school, there's actually a channel within Yammer that's got fantastic information that people respond to quite um, quickly on that. And of course, you've got my self-paced website, which will be appearing down the bottom. So that is it from me today. So remember today's song and today's motto, shut up and mine with me. Thank you. Just light a torch with me I said I'm going back She said shut up